So uh, we, it's Mother's Day this Sunday, coming the 18th of March here in the UK. So we wanted to talk about motherhood and feminism this week. Originally, uh, when we were discussing what we should talk about this week, with it being Mother's Day and Sunday, I actually wanted to talk about the kind of link it in to the apparent war going on in the US at the moment against women's health and um, the reproductive rights of uh, people with vaginas and people with uteruses. All the arguments that about um, birth control for people with vaginas and all just that seems to just be constructed entirely of misinformation and ignorance and you know good old fashioned misogyny and the the laws that are either already in place or in the process of being discussed or being passed which require there to be a um, trans uh, transvaginal ultrasound in order for people to access abortions which is, is basically institutionalizing medical rape and so I wanted to talk about these things because they need to be talked about because they need as many talking about them. as many people talking about them as possible. The world needs to be talking about how this is not okay. But then, in light of what we wanted to talk about this week, that actually got me thinking about how it relates to this wider issue in feminism of feminism and motherhood, and the fact that we have this huge debate about making sure that we have the choice to either of when we want to be pregnant, if we want to be pregnant at all. If, but then, once we are, and once we've, you know, been through pregnancy and birthed a child, there's no, we, there's less of a, less of a discussion around that. Issues such as maternity leave, childcare costs, crash facilities, accessibility for pushchairs and, and, um, prams and buggies, uh, baby changing facilities, breast, space for breastfeeding, um, Birthing procedures, how how births are handled in terms of midwives and all these issues surrounding motherhood and becoming a mother and being a mother that aren't as focused on as the issues of controlling as and when and if we become mothers. I think that's partly because of the, I mean, we've, we talked previously about how feminism is very focused on the issues of white, middle class, cisgendered, um, able-bodied women. And part of that as well is that feminism is largely focused on the issues of young, unmarried, childless women, which is terrible because we can't have these all these discussions about ensuring the rights of women to choose motherhood if and when they want it, but then exclude women who do choose or who are mothers. It, we can't, yeah, we can't really. I think that's bad, bad feminism. And this lack of discussion around these issues actually. This, the, the second thing that I was thinking about and which kind of relates is uh, there's an article which I'm going to post in the description uh, by uh, Sadie Doyle um, which is called titled uh, Ellen Ripley Saved My Life which is about how strong women are portrayed in the media in general and it covers uh, in, generally in sci- sci-fi fantasy um, but there's a section on uh, Ellen Ripley and Alien and the how this uh, portrays the what uh, Sadie Doyle refers to as the two faces of mummy, which is the one face of the first on the the first time is uh, portrayed by Ellen Ripley, and that's the loving, caring, protective mother who looks after you and makes sure you've got everything you need, and you know will turn on anyone and crush them if they try and hurt you. I think the best example of this for me is. Uh, they do like Molly Weasley's character in Harry Potter. That's the one face of motherhood. And then the other face reduces people essentially to, in the, the most extreme sense, to their biological functions. Uh, people are reduced to their uteruses. And Doyle describes this as uh, something entirely other, something that knows nothing but devouring, breeding and birthing, sticky with fluid, unknowable, a nightmare, the aptly aimed alien. And it's this, it's this idea that pathologizes pregnancy as like a parasitic infection, as we get in the, the trope of the mystical pregnancy, which um, there's an amazing feminist frequency video explaining, which I'll put a link to in the description as well. And I think something to note as well about both of these ideas of motherhood is that they're both, they're both consigning motherhood to this sort of secondary role um, as almost like a means to an end. 
in the latter instance, it's very literally a means to an end. It's all just about being, it's basically a walking incubator. It's just about creating something or someone else. Um, you get the perfect example in Doctor Who of Amy Pond, whose character in Series 6 apparently boiled down to being entirely created just to create, just to birth River Song. And then on the other hand, we have the mother figure who is there to love and protect you, but they're there to care for someone else or something else. They're protecting someone else. So generally they're left as just a secondary role or a service role there to look after you, but they don't actually have a fully fleshed out character in themselves. And again, we, we a lot. this is the reason that a lot of people complained about the Christmas episode of Doctor Who, where Madge was resigned to, you know, all of her strength came from the fact that she was a mother and she defeated them because she was a mother and she was a good mother and that's why she was a strong woman because she had given birth to children and where the, there was, it felt as though there was very little else of her character apart from the fact that she was a mother. That was all that she was. I think that we need to have more stories which flesh out people who are mothers or parents with fully with lives and dreams and ambitions and desires and faculties and just things that exist as well as them being a mother, aside from them being a mother, and celebrate the aspects of being a mother as a positive thing. And equally as feminists, we need to focus as much and pay as much attention to the issues that affect mothers as well as women who don't want to be mothers or are trying to, you know, make the decision of when, if they want to be mothers and include them in the conversations as well. And it's sure that when we have meetings, when we have protests, when we have, that there, there is adequate facilities for them to be able to be part of the movement. Because again, otherwise, as we've said before, if we're not being inclusive of as many people as we can, then what, what, why are we doing this? It's just bad feminism. Um, happy Mother's Day for this Sunday for UK subscriber people, and I'll see you next week.